It's time for today's face off on Fox Soul. Challengers Quan LX and Big Angry Adams ready to go blow by blow on those hot topics. Face off on Fox Soul starts right now. I have children who attend schools who have soccer games, y'all. You know, you all are asking me as if I'm not a parent in this city. I get it, I'm mayor, I get it. But you're asking me to give you a date and I have to court. Do you understand that you have not had a mayor like me? I get that. I have a wife, I have children, they have schedules. And plus, we still have public safety that we have to address. We still have the unhoused that we have to address. I still have a budget that I have to address. And I'm doing all of that with a black wife raising three black children on the west side of the city of Chicago. I am going to the border as soon as possible. In this round, here's Quanell X. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson made some very interesting remarks when it appeared he was frustrated speaking to the media, taking questions. And he ended by saying what a lot of people feel is controversial, that I have a black wife, I have black children, three black children that live on the west side of Chicago that I'm raising. And I'm still being mayor. You have not had a mayor like me before. Well, it's been a long time since you had a mayor in office. That was a black male since, uh, I can't remember the brother's name, but they had a great, great black mayor who did a lot for the city, but since him. And for him to talk like that was very interesting to say that, but I wish he would have went deeper, Charles, because what he said needed more context. He should have explained why it's so much being difficult as a black mayor raising black children on the west side of Chicago, one of the most dangerous areas in Chicago, Chicago's west side. Be elaborate more, give it more context, give a greater exegesis, if you can, Mr. Mayor, of why it's so difficult, like no other mayors have to deal with in that administration's history of raising black children in that city. Speak about what's going on about having a black wife, because that part kind of scared me that he went there and said that, but didn't give context to it of why it's a challenging issue being married to a black woman and being mayor of Chicago. Yeah, you know, this was not any of that, right? This was, he didn't, no one forced him to run for mayor. He chose to run for mayor. This was, and it's not limited to just black politicians. This is far left politicians when responding to criticism of their agenda that has allowed many cities to go underwater in, in poverty and crime and suffering for black Americans. He has trotted out some sort of identity card. It's, it's not just black politicians. It's far left, uh, you know, politicians on the far left use that as their, their gender, their gender identity, their race, any number of excuses to not actually get a damn thing accomplished, right? This was bull crap. It wasn't anything more, it wasn't anything <coughs> less. They, you know, he chose to run for office, he won, Right? He ran on his defund the police agenda. He ran on his far left sanctuary city agenda. And the, 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 the chickens have come home to roost, right? What we have right now in Chicago, which the mayor he replaced, while yes, she looked like evil golem from Lord of the Rings, was an African American woman, right? It's not like it was just some rich white person that ran for office and her policies, absolute idiocy. Chicago, a wonderful city, a wonderfully diverse city, a vibrant city with a wonderful culture, has become underwater in crime. But the crime in Chicago is very segregated. And who suffers the most? Black Chicago citizens. Right? He ran on trying to help things, on trying to fix things. Instead of laying out how he's going to fix things, he just sits there and whines, oh, I, I, I got black kids and a black wife. Well, you know what? You know what, Mayor? A lot of other people in Chicago have black children that they're worried about walking to school. But they're not Story. mayor, Charles. You're right, and he ran but for mayor, and he mayor, needs Charles. to fix the damn but city. Charles, you know, if, one they, man, if this was a Hispanic, one man if this was an Asian, if this was a white, man you would be saying city, just, Charles. but you know what, he's not doing it a damn thing. Council. It's his job. And if he wasn't Charles, black, you'd be all over his ass. everybody in that city to fix Chicago. Oh, Jesus. There's no one individual man who can fix Chicago. It's going to take council members. It's going to take okay. state. Okay. Legislators. But it ain't got nothing to do with his wife and kids in Chicago. Oh, I can't. It's going to take aldermen. I can't it's do my job. I got pastors. a wife and kids. Oh, I don't know. It's going to take I got a black wife and leaders. kids. It's going to take athletes, entertainers in Chicago. The problem is so deep, 
and so profound in Chicago, no one individual group or one individual you man, think, male or female, think can fix that problem. It's going to take a collective body of work with collective individuals to fix the problems by in Chicago the as well as America. Are the way to fix it. You don't think it's policies that are the avenue to fix the problem. Chicago had great problems before these current policies oh, of, of course, liberalism. But he was elected before to these fix liberal it. policies brought Chicago uh, to where on, it is. Hold on, it hold had on, many, hold many on, problems. Hold on. When was the last time Chicago didn't have a far left mayor? It's been a while. Right. In Chicago, the rich people live nice. The rich people live safe. Right, there are some cities. You no, know, like, the rich people used to, live, me. used to live safe. Hey, last episode, they used to be safe. Last episode, they ain't safe like you, they used you, to. You called white people all crappy because I was interrupting you. But let me point out, you're always interrupting me. So the truth is that Chicago is a very violent, segregated city. So in Houston, where we live, and New Orleans, crime is pretty endemic, right? Crime is pretty much everywhere, right? But there are some cities where crime and class and wealth are all tied together and the wealth areas are safe and the poor areas are Because poverty Chicago, leads to crime, right? Charles. But maybe, maybe Whether it's a more, white community maybe or a black put, community. Right, maybe put more police where there's more crime. Maybe have more community programs. Maybe, maybe want, don't bankrupt your no. city by giving we free housing more police, and free food. But we want police to hey, respect hey, the community in Chicago, like they want to be respected. Why in Chicago we do, want respectable why police. Why in Chicago, because this is what they were talking about. I know you didn't take the time to read the whole thing or watch the whole thing, but this was what they're talking about. Right? Why in Chicago would an illegal entrant get 40% more benefits than a black impoverished Chicago mother trying to raise her kids upright and safe? Why? But are is that the poor problem of the Chicago black? mayor? Yes. No. Yes. The migrant problem oh, is an American Jesus. problem. Uh, that problem what? is affecting the way, all the of America. Way these and cities sanctuary are responding cities to it. Are you got the worst. Hey, here's a question. But so, Chicago was a sanctuary so city when that, before Mayor Johnson. When, when that idiot de Blasio was the mayor of New York, right? He's got a, a, a black wife and two incredibly successful black children, right? In fact, so successful, one of them would be driven to Yale on, on the company dime, on the city, on the taxpayer dollar, right? If he would have got up and responded, oh, I can't do my job because I got a black wife and black children, you would have went insane. No, I don't understand it. No, you I would have. A white position, boy married you know, to a black woman. You know, you know how you decide? A white boy married you, to a black woman. Why is he going to be a boy? Because a white man. men why are weak as hell when they date black women. Okay. When a white man is married to a black woman, she runs the house. So She wears the pants. So, that white man is held hostage so and all, scared as hell. All, a I black like, woman married to a white sound, man, she runs sound, that marriage. Does this not sound racist to you? It's the facts. Does it not sound racist? A black woman married to a white okay. boy, she okay. runs that house. Okay, if you can speak about he white... He lived like a hostage. If, if you can speak about white people holistically based on their skin color, why do you whine so much about white people that do the same thing? I'm not doing that. You do it all the time. You do it every not. episode. No. Okay. See, listen to me. The more I talk to you, you remind me of the United Negro College Fund. Okay. You remember, remember, remember that? Yeah, it's, it still United exists. United Negro College uh, Fund. You don't have to remember it. It still exists. Our mind is a terrible thing to waste. Okay. And okay. your mind has been wasted, Charles. Okay, you're, you're like Dr. Carter G. Woodson. What you're doing When he is said Harvard was a big Negro and bad whiskey. And what Brandon Johnson was doing, he's being a liar. He's not saying I need to do my job better. He's saying, oh, these are other reasons Man, I can't do my job. A black wife. It's tough having a wife. It's tough having kids. But you still have to get up well, and you do your to a black damn woman job. Is different, brother. You still have to well, do your to damn job. Brandon Johnson is doing his damn You would be disgusted with him if he wasn't a black man. I disagree with you, Charles. Absolutely. Bless your Absolutely. heart. Absolutely. Bless your heart. When you look at any of these stories Poor that you thing. or our producer suggests, Bless your heart. you only make decisions based you on skin color. You know I'm color. praying for you, Charles. Be, be less of a bigot. I'm corner. praying for you, you Charles. Should. Bless you your heart. heart. I'm winning. Poor you got to pray for me. Because I got everything. I got the world by the White tail. White privilege. Yeah, that's it. In this round, here's Charles Big Angry Adams. What you just saw on that clip, Quanell, was the leader of the EFF party in South Africa, who is almost certainly going to be the next prime minister, Julius Malema leading a chant that he has been leading for years about kill the Boer, which means kill the white man, kill the white person. 
Now, there are those, like there was the, the Anti-Defamation League has issued a statement as to why that's not a call for genocide. The New York Times, other legacy media outlets in a fit of just a wash absurdist liberalism have said, oh, no, no, that's, I mean, they're, they're actually saying kill all white people, but they don't mean it. They don't really mean it. You shouldn't listen. And more importantly, the, the farm killings and the actual acts of genocide in South Africa have been either ignored or covered up by the media for years. It is being talked about on social media because the billionaire oligarch Elon Musk has been pushing the issue as of late. We have seen in Africa, and it started really with the transition from Rhodesia to Zimbabwe and Mugabe targeting not just taking land, but leading armies to eliminate and kill white residents in Zimbabwe that were clearly colonialism and of course the horror of apartheid for, for many, many years, but has been over for several decades in South Africa. But when you, what happened in Zimbabwe was when you ran off or killed all the white farmers, it led to a huge, unbelievable famine, right? And when this, this socialist race-based redistribution and eventually the, the Zimbabwe had to go and bring white farmers back to try to deal with that issue. And that's a you lie. Also, no, it's, it's, I, I know you make up stuff, but you read about it. It was but, because of sanctions and, 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 on but Zimbabwe. But more importantly, what happened during the famine was that that genocidal tactic, it shifted from race-based genocide to ethnic cleansing, where the government of Zimbabwe was killing a wide number of Africans because they were from the wrong, they were considered part of the wrong ethnic you group. You mean Rwanda? And, and, and no, no, the you know, genocide in Rwanda too. But at the end of the day, South Africa is the most violent country on the earth. It is is filled with criminality and it's horrible, not just for white people, but also for black people. But instead of addressing those issues, what Julius does and the EFF does is they say, hey, it's all Whitey's fault, let's kill Whitey. Which, hey, a lot of the problems in South Africa are tied to centuries of oppressive colonialism, but today they're not the problem. And none of us, especially not the mainstream media, should be okay with any leader talking about killing anyone based on their skin color. It's disgusting, I can't wait to hear you justify it. First of all, the brother in South Africa, Brother Julius, I would say is a very courageous brother, a strong, <laughs> strong leader in South Africa. And what he is saying is that those white farmers and white landowners who stole for generations black-owned land, black-owned property to enrich themselves, that when he becomes president, He's going to take that land back by force and give it back to the South Africans. That's exactly what Robert Mugabe did in Zimbabwe. He told the white colonial settlers criminals who stole all the land from black people and put them in poverty and enslavement that when he came president, he was going to take it back and give them so much time to give it back. And if they refused, did that work out? Then he would take it by did, force. Did that work out? It did. No, it didn't. Because they came back. Hey, Some white hey, farmers hey, came back when the Google world the of Europe famine. put on Google sanctions it. against Zimbabwe it's, it's because it's of always that. Whitey's fault. And the sanctions broke Mugabe and Zimbabwe, which where they had to bring some white farmers back. In South Africa, what he is saying is that every white person that benefited from neocolonial conquest and genocide against black South Africans will have to pay the price by giving back the stolen really? land. That, that, that's now, let me ask what you another heard question. him saying, kill Whitey. If they refuse to give it up. But that's not what he said. No. He just said, kill Whitey. I'm putting in context what he oh, said. Oh, you're putting it in if context. If they refuse oh. to give back what so, they stole, so, so he's someone, standing, you can kill so him. So if someone was saying. And guess what? If someone, Is that not wait, what okay. Israel did? So, so we have a huge. Is that not what so, Israel did? So I know you want Israel to believed I, they had a historical I, look, claim to believe, Palestinian land. Believe, and they took it by uh, force. I know. And they I took know. it by force. You look, they murdered I men, know. women, children, they, and babies. And white folks like you had no I, problem I with it. Know. White folks like you support it and applaud it to this day. I but the minute know. a black man in South Africa says, we're going to do the same thing based on actual facts of justice, you got a problem with okay. it. What you're talking about right now is this current situation in Israel. You talk about it as if October 7th didn't occur. And, you know, I find the bombing campaign... Of the but IDF how many October 7th occurred in South Africa where this brother okay. is? But again... By the fact, what the white South Africans did 
to black South Africans make October 7th look like uh, child's play. I, I know that you want to pretend that apartheid didn't end decades ago for the point, and I know you want to infect every conversation with your physical apartheid uh, you're ended. You're interrupting me again. You always do. Before you, Nelson you Mandela want, became president, I know and then him and F.W. De Klerk shared the presidency as I a symbol of unity and forgiveness. And Bishop Desmond your, Tutu, your he led the government in repenting and bringing back unity. Everything. But the but truth it never happened. is, Julius Molina is literally chanting, kill white people. Julius Molina's party he said, kill has the criminals. been targeting, no, he said, kill white farmers. And those white, white farmers people. are criminals. Oh, no, no, they're not. And they're thieves. Oh, okay. So they are thieves so if you bought because land, you're still holding okay. on and, and to truth, stolen property. So white folks ain't buying no damn land in South okay. Africa. So if, 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 if a white politician was chanting to kill black people generally because of the acts of black people historically. If we stole their land okay. and refused so, to give it back. So here, and when we stole their land, we so, raped their wives, we raped their daughters, so, we murdered their sons. Okay. So, Hell yeah, he should chant okay, that. But so rapes and murders today are okay. Just like the way you justify Palestinian rapes and murders, right? No, I'm not just doing like that. You do it all the time. But you, just justify, like you justify white people doing the same the thing all no, over Africa. Absolutely. absolutely but I yet don't. you speak no, up against I, I, Palestinians when they commit First these crimes. And love, you should. I love how we have topics. And you should. I love how we have topics that you want to talk about, and then you pretend it's me. But the truth is, what he said was repugnant and awful. And the, only reason, and the only reason he's talking about killing people because of the color of their skin. Who refused to give up no, stolen land. He, you, you lie about it. Who refused to give up stolen land. land. And it's wrong. And you're wrong for justifying No, it. he's right. Take, get them thieves off your damn property. emotional return to where she was captured and enslaved three years ago. Nadia Murad was one of the lucky ones who escaped Daesh and remembers what the terrorist group did here to her people, the Yazidis of Iraq. In this round, here's Quanell X. Charles, we're hearing about a horror story coming out of Iraq of the Yazidi people who are being victims of what many call modern-day genocide at the hands of religious bigots who are Muslims, or at least call themselves Muslims, who want to totally cleanse another religion that they feel is not of Islam. And they're kidnapping women, kidnapping children, holding men and women and children hostage, killing thousands of men, and also selling them as slaves. We've seen similar behavior in Libya after the fall of Muammar Gaddafi, many African brothers and sisters seeking to go through Libya were being captured and sold as slaves and being murdered. But I'm staying now on Iraq. The world has ignored this crisis. And the United States government, which was there and fully aware during this time since 2014 of what was happening to the Yazidi people, did not do much to help them. So now many are asking, why is it their genocide is being ignored, their plight being ignored. But what we're watching in Palestine and Israel is making world news. But yet we have tens of thousands being killed in Iraq and thousands of Yazidis being killed strictly based on religion. Well, the Yazidis, it's, a, uh, it's an unusual monotheistic religion that is, is Kurdish based, right? And uh, old Kurdistan, it is, you know, it's Syria, it's Iraq, it's, it's portions of a number of countries. And there's an effort by a number of Islamist regimes to eliminate them completely. And I, what you're, you always use this, this excuse, oh, this isn't real Islam. And while I agree it's not real religious behavior, it is very commonplace in the Islamic world to engage in modern day genocide. And I think the criticism right now is not directly to the United States, but more at the United Nations that had people that witnessed it and did nothing. That the UN stood down and stood by while not just widespread murder, right, ethnic-based murder. Uh, children, male children were captured and pushed into be serving as child soldiers. 
and young female children and adult women were forced into, or being forced into sexual slavery, and no one's doing a damn thing. And there's no one marching for them either. In the wake of October 7th, the immediate aftermath of the, the Gazan attack on, on a bunch of small villages in Israel, there, was, there were huge protests all over the world cheering on Hamas and Gaza, right? And we continue to see it. We see people shutting down roadways. We saw this in Memphis just last week, shutting down the interstate. Nobody was arrested. We see all of this all over the world cheering, cheering terror, cheering Hamas, supporting Hamas. And yet we're seeing no one, we're seeing silence. And I think the reason is, is because the legacy media and the mainstream media doesn't want to criticize or discuss the realities of most of these Islamist regimes. And who suffers the most, right? This is why there are hardly no Christians and absolutely no Jews and hardly no Yazidis and hardly no one left in the Islamic world that don't follow the Islamic religion. That's the absolute and lie. That, no, it's not. You were lying. That's I know, I know how you love to lie. And, and you like to call Israel to the open American air. people. No, and it, no, and it goes Nobody's further. Nobody's paying attention because yes. they're not yes. white. Yes, go. Because go. the Yazidi people are not blonde haired and blue eyed white folk. Well, if these were blonde haired, blue eyed so, white folk suffering like so, this, being sold into wait, slavery, killed by the Problem thousands, the world media Problem would be paying math. attention Problem. to it Problem because they're that not math. white. So, That's why they're so being ignored. The, the Palestinians are white? No, but it's the Jews they're paying attention to. Uh, they kill in Palestinians. On, on. Absolutely. Almost 40,000 men, women, and do, children have been you, killed in Palestine. Maybe, maybe we exist in different timelines no, and different man. universes. Let's not pretend no. like if these were white folks, all of the, the protests, world would not be talking about all this. All of the protests in America and across the Western world are for ceasefire and Palestinians, right? You don't see Jewish people having these big giant protests, and you don't see the mainstream media painting a sympathetic portrait why. of Israel. No, it's because the Islamist world has somehow become a political No, to call for ceasefire the, in no, Israel and no, Palestine the, war. We're talking about the attention. The Hamas war we're talking, is not anti-Israel, anti-Jewish. The United there Nations needs to be a ceasefire, has issued Charles. like 30 criticisms, official criticisms of Israel in the last year where And they they've said, ignored every one wait, of them. Wait, no, no. But you know what? They, who they don't criticize? They don't criticize China, who's actively engaging in genocide. I think they had one criticism. I won't disagree with you on that one. They don't criticize Iran. They don't criticize the treatment of women in Saudi Arabia or the treatment of foreigners or non saudis America they don't. don't either. Okay. Oh, I agree. America but, don't either. But the United Nations, and remember, that's their job. who's the biggest buyer of Saudi oil? Okay, well, America shouldn't be because we should be producing so our own oil. So let's not pretend but, but day like one, America ain't day guilty one, the same thing. Day one, dumbass Joe Biden, let's shut down all the pipelines and cost a bunch of jobs. And let's buy our oil from, from Islamist terrorists, right? So why don't the American government condemn what's taking place in Saudi Arabia when it comes to human rights. Oh, they absolutely should. Right? But, but why they, don't they? they? Because that's the thing. No one wants to criticize the Islamist world. Because they're now, afraid we all cut that pretend, oil pipeline off. We all want to pretend that the oppression going on in Iran, the, the genocide of Yazidis going on in Iraq, we all want to pretend that it's not occurring because it's politically incorrect to criticize Charles, Islam. Do and you the know truth is, even you sit there as a member of the of nation those of Islam, Muslims in you sit here countries and say, have never even read the Holy Quran because they can't read. But it's always but they can't even read. Oh, it's, it's the truth. They is can't even read. That once they're, they're once behaving in the name is, of Islam, once these and Islamist, Islamist read the regimes are done with the Yazidis and Jews, they'll turn on themselves. It's disgusting, no, and it needs to end. The West and we need to have honest conversation because they're not white. Okay. I absolutely don't get my opponent's. I guess mental math. I'm not sure that his argument in this last section was no one's talking about it because they're not white, as if Palestinians are somehow white. He will find in his closing segment to find some way to turn it into some virulent anti-Semitism because his countdown is he doesn't like gay people, one, he doesn't like Jewish people, two, and he hates whitey, three. Instead of looking at all of us, right, as that's how stupid the, the so many people in this world are, white people included, right, that, that we look at this organ that is the epidermis. And we define, not all of us, but a great number of people like my opponent, define how he feels on subjects, how he feels on issues, how he feels about people based on skin color. And Martin Luther King, the great Martin Luther King, was very, very clear that that is something horrible. 
and instead we have done this, this 180 with these strange arguments to make it, hey, we can talk about people because of their race or their religion, but only if it's white people and it's disgusting. My opponent coming at me with such lies <laughs> is like throwing Moby Dick a Tic Tac and asking Moby Dick to tell you the taste. Oh, goodness. Listen, I don't hate gay people. I do believe in the religion of Islam and I believe in the truth of the Bible. Just because I believe that same-sex marriage is a sin and unacceptable by God does not mean I hate gay people. The Bible says love the sinner but hate the sin. So don't condemn me. You have to understand I'm standing on my faith. Two, I don't hate Jewish people. How can I hate Jewish people when the original Jews are black people? I would have to hate my own people if I hate Jewish people. What I hate is injustice, what I hate is wrong, and what I hate is war, and I believe there should be a ceasefire. Now, there's no way in the world I hate white people. That's madness. I have members of my own family who are white, surprising to my co-host over here. So don't say that I hate white people. Hate is too consuming. Hate, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, consumes the hater as well as the hate head. I hate no one based on skin color. That's it for the face-off on Fox Soul. We'll catch you next time.